You know, I was really surprised that most of you found desserts to be the most cumbersome parts of a holiday dinner party. For me, that answer is appetizers all the way because there's always so many choices and you can never decide what to do and it just seems like too much extra work with a main and a dessert and side dishes. But that's my take. We're gonna have three simple mixes to make three amazing appetizers which should be good for most of your guests and it's gonna be stress-free because the only way to be stress-free, especially in the holidays, is to just plan and plan ahead. For those who follow me on Instagram, you probably already saw a sneak peek of these dishes, but for those who did not, let's get into this recipe right now. So today we'll make some Christmas or holiday samosas. The first one is gonna be a really simple mashed potato samosa, and they're so easy to do. So you need some steamed or boiled Yukon Gold potatoes, and just put that in a large bowl or in the bowl of your stand mixer, and then whisk it until the butter is completely molten in. And then start adding some cream a little bit at a time. I use 10% cream, it just helps adjust the consistency and just control the creaminess a bit better. And season with salt, pepper, and keep whisking until they're nice and fluffy and they're super smooth. I always prefer when my mash is super smooth rather than being kind of chunky. I link a full recipes for the mashed potatoes, but there's not much to it. Just some potato, butter, cream, salt and pepper. That's it. You can put some chives in there if you want. You can put green onions and we'll get to that when we start actually assembling our samosas. But before we get to that, let's make our other two mixes and they're gonna be cream cheese based mixes. So it's really easy to just mix it up in a bowl and the mix is ready within minutes. So first I'll make a jalapeno and corn mix. So for that, you need some cream cheese, lots of chopped jalapenos and some cheddar cheese. That adds a lot of creaminess and just richness to that mix. Then just mix that in and then add in some corn as well, add a pinch of salt. You can put some pepper if you want and then just mix that really well. And that is it. You can let that chill while you make the other mix. The second one is gonna be a simple spinach parmesan mix. So for that, I'm gonna first blanch the spinach. So what you want to do is once your pot of water is at a boil, add the spinach in. As soon as it starts to wilt, then take it out and transfer it into a ice water bath. That's gonna help maintain and shock the spinach to keep that bright green color. Then just drain it and squeeze all of that water out of that spinach and then add it into a bowl where you have some cream cheese, some parmesan, and then just season it with a bit of salt and then mix that all really well. And that is all for the mixes. I told you it was gonna be easy. So we'll be using some phyllo sheets to make our samosas, but if you can't find that, you can also use some egg roll wraps as well. You might find that at your local Asian store. So you would need a large clear surface, make sure it's dry and just have a moist towel always on the side because we will need to protect that dough from drying out as you're working on it. Filo is very thin and it dries out really quickly. So we have to be kind of quick and have everything in place before we take that filo out of the fridge. And then also melt some butter in a large bowl or a ramekin and have that on the side with a spoon or a, or a pastry brush. And once you have all that ready, take two sheets of the filo out and you should be able to easily split that into two large halves as well. Now, for the top one, just set that aside and put a damp kitchen towel over it. Now, with the bottom layer, take your butter and brush that really well. Brush each and every corner and try not to miss a spot. That butter is gonna help keep it nice and moist, so as we're working with it, it's gonna stop the dough from drying out. Once it's all covered, then put that second sheet that we removed earlier and kind of overlap it corner to corner. Now to get the triangular shape of a samosa, we'll cut this with a sharp knife and make some two and a half to three inch wide strips. So cut it just like this, top to bottom, and then you'll have your 
separate portions and now I'll show you how to make the actual triangles. So start from the bottom and put about a tablespoon of the stuffing a bit offset to the right towards the bottom most part of the actual strip. Then sprinkle some finely chopped chives over those mashed potatoes. Then go corner to the edge of the strip. So now you have a triangle, now just fold that against that folded edge and then you have another triangle and then you keep folding again and again in this fashion until you're all the way at the end. Now you're gonna wonder how will we seal it? There's nothing to hold that edge together with our folded triangles. Well here's a trick for that. We're gonna make some glue. So you want to take some flour and some water and just whisk that together into a thick paste and we'll use some of that paste we we'll put that on the edge and seal it and that way it will stay sealed. So here are all the portions of our mashed potato samosas and we'll do the same with our jalapeno and corn samosas and we'll do the same with the spinach and parmesan samosas as well. Take your time with it. Even I was confused at first to get those perfect triangles but you'll get there. Just have a look at this video in slow-mo if you have to and we'll have some beautiful triangular portions. Now you can bake this at 450 Fahrenheit if you want for 15 to 20 minutes or you can deep fry it as well. Now I'll be deep frying all of these. I'm, I'm telling you, these turned out so well. But I'm also gonna show you if you're cooking for a really large party or if you don't want to spend the time making these triangles, how you can use the same ingredients to make something completely different which is even more easier. So you have options. So again, stress-free cooking, holidays is not for stress. So I'll be showing you how to make these bite-sized snacks with the filo paper and the cream cheese mixes. So what you need to do is the same first few steps. You have your mixes ready, you have your molten butter ready, and then you take your filo sheet out, you separate it into two, so you have two whole size sheets, you brush, one of the sides with butter while you keep the other side protected with a damp kitchen towel. And once you've brushed each and every corner, then you want to overlap that top part. And then what you have to do is have the short edge of the rectangle towards you and then spread the cream cheese mixture on the bottom side of your filo paper. Leave at least an inch of a gap at the bottom so you have some room to fold and just make sure you go in a nice straight line and leave some space on the sides as well. Just like this. And then fold each side just to create a nice seal and then tightly roll this all the way to the top. I will brush the tops of each of these rolls with some more butter. It helps add lots of color, lots of flavor. And then just to make life a bit easier when it's time to serve, just cut some slits over the pastry itself, just the top of the pastry with a sharp knife. For one of them, I'm gonna go in a diagonal and for the other one, I'm gonna go straight down. And then just transfer this into the oven and just let this bake until it's golden brown. Just turn the baking sheet 180 degrees halfway through the cooking just for evenness while cooking. Now while this is baking in the oven, let's focus on our deep fried samosas. So I have some peanut oil heating up here and all you have to do now is make sure that you deep fry it until the pastry is nice and golden brown. And it should only take you between five to eight minutes on medium heat and all you're looking for is a nice golden brown color. There's nothing to cook on the inside. Everything is vegetarian. So it's gonna be so much easier. And there you have it. I told you three awesome, simple appetizers for this recipe. I gave you five. I hope you like the bonus because it's all about a stress-free holiday and a 
delicious, tasty holiday. And I made this because of Jerry Ellen from Cooking with Neighbors. And she was the one who told me to make some Christmas samosas or holiday themed appetizers. And I think it's gonna fit perfectly in any of those scenarios. So thanks for that. And you can see our baked bonus appetizers are ready as well, nice and golden brown. And all you have to do is cut the markings we made on the pastry and these are ready to serve. I sure had my fun making these. And if you want more fun recipes, if you want more samosa recipes, be sure to click the links over here and don't forget to hit subscribe.